So on the first spacewalk, the crew members egress the joint airlock, and they make their way up to the center of the S1 truss. Uh, Mike Hopkins, Mike will be uh, the free float crew member. Rick will ingress the arm. Koichi will fly him up to the work site. And then the two crew members will spend some time demating those four fluid quick disconnects, which are illuminated there. So a quick overview of the interfaces on the pump module. You have four fluid quick disconnects. Three of them are one and a half inch size. One is a quarter size. You have five electrical connectors. And then you also have four fasteners, which are five eighths inch fasteners, which are what the primary uh, fasteners that hold the pump module into the, the truss. So here we were fortunate enough on the partial gravity simulator to have Doug Wheelock and Tracy Caldwell Dyson help us create a training video about lessons they learned during the last pump module R&R. So we were able to film this training video just a few days ago and we got that uplinked to the crew so they're able to learn of any gotchas. Uh, once those four fluid lines are disconnected, they'll then work to install the half inch and the one and a half inch fluid lines to this pump module jumper box. And as I mentioned, this is what allows ammonia to flow, uh, now that the pump module is out, allows ammonia to have access to the, uh, the accumulators and the nitrogen and ammonia tanks to prevent liquid lock. So that's what we spend most of EVA1 doing. On EVA2, the focus is getting the failed pump module out of the truss and the new one in the truss. So there you can see the Lupe pump module on the S1 truss on the right side. And as Mike mentioned, we have three spares. We're shooting for the ESP3 spare pump module uh, to install in its new home. Right outside the airlock, Mike will pick up the adjustable grapple bar from the ESP2 carrier. He will then translate up to the truss and Rick will be on the arm and they'll work to release the four fasteners that are holding the pump module on the truss. Then they'll slowly slide the pump module out of the truss about halfway, giving them access to the install location for the adjustable grapple bar. And it's this grapple bar that allows the pump module to be uh, temporarily stowed between EVAs. So once the pump module is free of the truss, they'll give Koichi the go to relocate the arm and Rick over to the POA or the temporary stow location uh, for this pump module. And Mike said this is our, our desire is to keep this pump module as a viable spare so that we could perform additional maintenance on it in the future. So once they have the spare pump module stowed on the POA, they'll then work to translate over to ESP3 where the new pump module is located. They'll release that from the carrier and then fly back over to the truss to install that new pump module in the uh, same location where we removed the failed. As you can see, there's quite a bit of arm maneuvers throughout all of these EVAs, so I'm sure Koichi will be getting a workout. So they'll work together to slowly guide the pump module into the truss, and then they'll attach the four fasteners that hold it in place, and then mate the electrical connectors, which will give us good insight into seeing if we have a, a viable spare in this pump module. So the third spacewalk is focused on getting the fluid lines hooked up to the pump module, those four fluid lines hooked up to the pump module, and then working on relocating the failed pump module from its temporary stowage location over to the ESP3 location where we retrieved the spare. On EVA3, we'll be swapping roles, so Mike will actually be the crew member in the arm this time, and Rick will be the free float crew member. As Koichi is flying Mike over with the failed pump module, Rick will spend some time at the S1 pump module install location, verifying that he has everything buttoned up and that we've cleared the MT translation corridor. Once they're at the ESP3 work site, uh, Mike will slowly give uh, commands to Koichi to bring him into the work site. Then they will, the two crew members will work together to release the adjustable grapple bar, and then they will work on rotating the pump module 180 degrees to allow them to install it into the rails on the ESP3 work site. Once they install it, they'll attach the four fasteners that hold it in place, mate some electrical connectors to provide heater power to this failed unit, and then install some multi-layer insulation over it to protect it. Mike will then work to retrieve the adjustable grapple bar from a temp stow location. And Koichi will then begin maneuvering him from the outboard location on S3 all the way back to the ESP2 carrier on the airlock. During this time, Rick will be cleaning up the work site, which includes uh, packing up the tool bags that they brought out with them and then heading back towards the airlock. Once at the ESP2 uh, location, Mike will install the adjustable grapple bar onto the FHRC or the flex hose rotary coupler, which is its temp stow location. Once complete with that, he will work on egressing the arm and removing the foot restraint, and then the two crew members will head inside, and that will complete the EVA.